Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Why Hong Kong's property slump may be best time to focus on public housing. New Year, old pain for Hong Kong bankers and investors as IPO windfalls elude all. How Asian women are challenging bias to carve out entrepreneurial success. U.S. Mall's blacklisting CXMT to further curb China's chip advance. What's wrong with China's economy? Can it be fixed? Why Hong Kong's property slump may be best time to focus on public housing. South China Morning Post. The Hong Kong government is struggling due to the weak property market, as land premiums and stamp duties make up a significant part of its revenue. Property developers are also hurting, as they have excess inventory that cannot be sold or rented out. Homeowners with mortgages are also suffering, particularly those who bought properties at the peak of the market and now face negative equity. However, the real victims in this situation are the non-homeowners, who are stuck between high borrowing costs and rising rents in an unaffordable property market. New Year old pain for Hong Kong bankers and investors as IPO windfalls elude all. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's IPO market has had a sluggish start in 2024, raising concerns among investment bankers. So far this year, only five companies have raised 2.18 billion Hong Kong dollars, $279 million, from their stock offerings, the slowest start since 2011. In contrast, the U.S. market has seen 26 IPOs and $6.3 billion in proceeds, its best run in three years. Bankers are concerned about job security and the drop in commission fees and high bonuses. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Bank of America have reported job losses and significant cuts in total compensation. How Asian women are challenging bias to carve out entrepreneurial success. South China Morning Post The post-COVID economy in Asia is creating a new generation of women entrepreneurs, according to an article in the South China Morning Post. However, the report found that 70% of women-owned small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, worldwide lack access to adequate financial services. Women entrepreneurs often face a lack of access to finance, a lack of network and mentorship, limited access to training and education, and cultural biases that lead to gender discrimination. However, the report suggests that hope is on the horizon, as companies in Asia are quickly catching up to diversity standards in the West, and shifting attitudes towards remote and hybrid work are opening up new opportunities for women to balance other responsibilities such as childcare or elderly care. U.S. Mall's blacklisting CXMT to further curb China's chip advance. Bloomberg. The Biden administration is considering imposing sanctions on several Chinese tech companies, including memory chip maker Changxian Memory Technologies, CXMT, in an effort to limit China's advancement in advanced semiconductors. The U.S. Commerce Department's Bureau of Industry and Security, BIS, is reportedly contemplating adding CXMT to its entity list, which restricts companies' access to U.S. technology. Other Chinese firms are also under consideration for restrictions. The potential sanctions are a response to a chip breakthrough made by Huawei last year, with the Biden administration seeking to curb China's access to advanced American technologies. What's wrong with China's economy? Can it be fixed? Bloomberg. China's leadership is aiming for economic growth of around 5% this year, but the country is facing a confluence of problems that could hinder its ability to achieve this goal. These problems include sluggish consumer spending, a shaky property market, a stock market route, U.S. efforts to curb China's tech ambitions, record youth unemployment, and high levels of local government debt. These strains have had a global impact, affecting commodity prices, equity markets, and trade. The Chinese economy has been struggling across various sectors, with manufacturing activity contracting for a fifth straight month and exports falling for the first time since 2016. 
the country's property sector, which was once a major driver of economic growth, has seen declining prices and increased debt. The negative wealth effect from the property slump has led to decreased consumer spending and increased savings. Unemployment is also a concern, particularly among young graduates. The Chinese government has implemented measures to support the economy, including monetary easing and fiscal stimulus. However, the challenges facing the country could result in an extended period of weak growth similar to Japan's lost decade in the 1990s. Hong Kong startups see potential in Saudi Arabia, but no immediate gains. South China Morning Post Hong Kong startups and investors are looking to make inroads in Saudi Arabia as it invests heavily to rival the United Arab Emirates, UAE, as the dominant regional market. The third annual Leap Technology Conference in Riyadh was seen as an opportunity for Hong Kong firms to enter the Saudi market, which is viewed as the next growth area in the region. Patrick Singh, founder of Hong Kong-based Singh's Group Family Office, said that the UAE was a mature market and it was difficult for investors to penetrate relationships with business leaders. What's the point of a mandatory pension that offers no financial security? South China Morning Post the Mandatory Provident Fund, MPF, Hong Kong's government-orchestrated pension scheme, has been criticized for providing poor returns and failing to offer financial security in retirement. Many Hong Kongers have lost faith in fund managers, believing that they have more interest in fees than in the financial security of retirees. The MPF has reported losses for eight out of its 23-year history, and the average allocation of 56% in the Hong Kong market means few account holders have enjoyed significant gains. Some retirees are finding that their pensions are worth less than what they put in. As Singapore run ends, unpaid therapist Taylor Swift gives fans inspiration. South China Morning Post Around 300,000 Taylor Swift fans from Singapore and the surrounding region are expected to attend her six sold-out concerts in Singapore this week. The concerts are part of Swift's era's world tour, and fans have traveled from far and wide to see the pop star perform. Many fans have spoken about the impact Swift's music has had on their lives, with one fan saying that Swift is the unpaid therapist of girls because her songs relate to their experiences. Another fan said Swift's music helped her through her recovery from lupus. Vietnam's bid for emerging market upgrade faces reality check. Yahoo! Vietnam's plans to join emerging market indexes, including FTSE Russell, by 2025, are being hampered by the requirement for fully funded accounts from equity traders. The country's stock market is worth $269 billion, bigger than the Philippines' market, but traders are arguing that the requirement should be removed. A decision on Vietnam's place in FTSE Russell is expected on March 27, while MSCI must also decide whether the country will join its emerging market index. Duty of authorities to help support Hong Kong tourism. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong and mainland China should consider raising duty-free allowances and introducing preferential policies to support tourism in order to attract more visitors and boost their COVID-battered economies. Mainland tourists are subject to customs duty on goods exceeding 5,000 yuan upon return, whereas Hong Kong travelers generally do not face taxes on overseas shopping. By contrast, Hainan offers an annual 100,000 yuan allowance for purchases. Adjusting these duty-free allowances and implementing tax refund measures could encourage more tourists to visit Hong Kong and mainland China. What's in Hong Kong's new national security bill? Diplomat The Hong Kong government has unveiled proposed legislation that could see residents sentenced to life imprisonment if they endanger national security. The move has raised concerns about the erosion of the city's freedoms, for years after a similar law was imposed by Beijing that effectively eradicated public dissent. Hong Kong's political opposition has been targeted by a crackdown since anti-government protests in 2019, with many activists arrested and others forced to flee abroad. 
numerous civil society groups have been disbanded, and media outlets such as Apple Daily and Stand News have been closed. The proposed law will expand the government's powers to tackle challenges to its rule, targeting actions including espionage, disclosing state secrets, and colluding with external forces to commit illegal acts. It will also introduce tougher penalties for individuals found guilty of collaborating with foreign governments or organizations. The legislation is expected to pass easily through the legislature, which has been packed with Beijing loyalists following a recent electoral overhaul. Need to get landmark law right for sake of Hong Kong's normal daily life. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong lawmakers have begun scrutinizing the city's new national security law, which includes a comprehensive set of 39 crimes. The bill runs to 212 pages and aims to ensure that Hong Kong's legal framework meets modern national security challenges. The legislation is expected to be passed quickly, possibly by China's National Security Education Day on April 15. However, lawmakers have raised concerns about the broad definition of key terms in the bill, indicating that they intend to push for improvements. The passing of the legislation will be a landmark, and efforts should be made to ensure it is thoroughly scrutinized and refined. U.S. Army officer charged with selling Taiwan secrets to China. The Independent a U.S. Army intelligence officer has been arrested and accused of selling classified information on Taiwan to China. Sergeant Corby and Schultz allegedly used his top-secret security clearance to download classified government records on national defense, including maps, plans, and notes. Schultz worked with an individual known as Conspirator from June 2022 until his arrest and sent multiple documents to him, including a manual on using intercontinental ballistic missiles. Schultz has been charged with six counts, including conspiracy and bribery. Hong Kong's finance chief rejects calls to legalize basketball betting. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan Imopa, has rejected calls to legalize basketball betting, saying that he has deep reservations about the move which could encourage more young people to gamble. Several political parties had called for the introduction of basketball betting to combat illegal gambling and increase public revenue. The Hong Kong Jockey Club had welcomed the proposal and was happy to explore its feasibility with the government. However, Chan said that legalizing additional gambling for the purpose of raising government revenue was not the right direction. Like a Soviet Los Angeles's, in search of humanity in Milton Keynes. Telegraph. The town of Milton Keynes, north of London, has long been the butt of jokes, however, it may not deserve its reputation. Built from scratch in the 1960s to relieve London of its ever-increasing population, it is often described as a concrete jungle with roundabouts. However, a visit to the town found evidence of culture and community. The town is home to the MK Gallery, a cinema, and a neighboring theater, which host West End shows. The architecture of the gallery is based on the original architectural building where the town was designed and was developed with the involvement of Norman Foster and Terence Conran. The MK Gallery's director said the town was born from the same thinking that created the Pompidou Centre in Paris. The town also has a 720M long shopping centre, which has aged well and has palm trees and chill-out zones. It has history, too, including being the location for the video of Cliff Richard's 1981 song, Wired for Sound. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, I have some interesting news to share with you. Firstly, Hong Kong's property market is experiencing a slump, which may be a great opportunity for the government to focus on public housing. While property developers and homeowners are feeling the pinch, it's the non-homeowners who are struggling the most in this unaffordable market. Next, Hong Kong's IPO market is off to a slow start this year, raising concerns among investment bankers. The U.S. market, on the other hand, is booming. This discrepancy is causing job losses and cuts in compensation for bankers in Hong Kong. 
Moving on, we have an article highlighting the challenges faced by Asian women entrepreneurs. While the post-COVID economy is creating opportunities, these women still face obstacles such as limited access to finance, network and mentorship, and gender discrimination. However, there is hope as attitudes in Asia are changing and new opportunities are emerging. The Biden administration is considering imposing sanctions on Chinese tech companies, including memory chip maker CXMT, to limit China's advancement in advanced semiconductors. This move is in response to a chip breakthrough made by Huawei last year. China's economy is facing a range of problems, including sluggish consumer spending, a shaky property market, and U.S. efforts to curb its tech ambitions. These challenges could result in an extended period of weak growth similar to Japan's lost decade in the 1990s. Hong Kong startups see potential in Saudi Arabia as it invests heavily to rival the UAE as the dominant regional market. However, immediate gains may be limited as it is difficult for investors to penetrate relationships with business leaders. The Mandatory Provident Fund, MPF, in Hong Kong is being criticized for providing poor returns and failing to offer financial security in retirement. Many retirees are finding that their pensions are worth less than what they put in, leading to a loss of faith in fund managers. Taylor Swift's sold-out concerts in Singapore are expected to draw around 300,000 fans, who credit her music with inspiring and helping them through various challenges in their lives. Vietnam's plans to join emerging market indexes are facing a reality check due to the requirement for fully funded accounts from equity traders. Traders argue that this requirement should be removed to boost Vietnam's chances of inclusion. Hong Kong and mainland China should consider raising duty-free allowances and introducing preferential policies to support tourism and attract more visitors. Adjusting these measures could help boost their economies, which have been battered by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Hong Kong government has unveiled proposed legislation that could see residents sentenced to life imprisonment if they endanger national security. This move has raised concerns about the erosion of the city's freedoms. A U.S. Army officer has been arrested and accused of selling classified information on Taiwan to China. The officer allegedly used his top-secret security clearance to download classified government records. Hong Kong's finance chief has rejected calls to legalize basketball betting, citing concerns about the potential impact on young people and problem gambling. Lastly, the town of Milton Keynes in the UK, often the butt of jokes, may not deserve its reputation. Despite its concrete jungle appearance, the town has a thriving cultural scene and a unique history. That's all the news I have for you today. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts and questions. What do you think about the property slump in Hong Kong and the potential for public housing? How do you feel about the challenges faced by women entrepreneurs in Asia? And what are your thoughts on the proposed national security law in Hong Kong? I look forward to hearing your perspectives. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay connected with the Six Degrees world. This is Dr. Six, signing off. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.